Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at particle systems in Play Canvas. And particle systems can basically be used to create particles in your game that might be used for things like smoke um, or water splashing or um, different things like that. So um, it can also be used <clears throat> for flames, different animation effects that you might want to have in your game. Um, so to create a particle system, it's an entity, so you need to click on Add Entity from the Hierarchy menu. And then it's right down the bottom, you click on Particle System. Okay, so I have a new particle system in the Hierarchy. I can move it around with the Translate tool. Um, I'll just move it, just move it there, because my camera in the scene is facing this this box here. So um, I'll leave the box here. That's uh, all I've got in the scene at the moment is the box, the directional light, the camera, and now the particle system. So I've got a particle system here now. All right. So firstly, just click on launch to see what um, this particle system looks like to begin with, because when you add a particle system to your game, it already has a heap of settings to get you started. So here we go. It's already working. And um, basically this particle system emits particles and you can specify the rate at which it emits particles. You can specify the color and the shape of the particles. You can specify um, the direction that they go, the angle. Um, there's a whole heap of different properties you can change. So the particle system is here. Um, it's already started and it's looping. So let's go back to the editor and have a look at some of the um, things here that we can change. So when we select the particle system in the hierarchy and have a look over here in the inspector panel, there's a few things that we can change. Okay, so obviously we can change its position, its rotation, uh, and its scale, just like any other object here. But if we scroll down to particles, to this component here, we have particle count. So that is the amount of particles emitted. Okay. Um, when you mouse over these different properties, if you're not sure what they mean, it will give you a brief description. So here it says the maximum number of particles managed by this particle system. So if I increase this to a bigger number, so maybe if I add an extra zero, so it changes from 30 to 300, there will be a lot more particles being emitted now. So you can see there's quite a, a lot there. The, there's a lot of particles being emitted from the particle system. If I change it to three, by the time it finishes its loop, now there's only three particles being emitted for each loop. Okay. And the loop at the moment starts, or the lifetime is about five seconds. So I'm going to change that back to 30. The lifetime is basically the duration of the particle system. So the length of time in seconds between a particle's birth and it's death. So a particle, there's 30 particles being emitted here at the moment, and they will last for five seconds each. Okay. There's also the emission rate. Um, so that's the interval in seconds between particle births. So you can specify from and to, and it will be a random, random number between the, those, um, the two numbers here that you specify. Okay. So the bounds of time range defining the interval in seconds between particle births. The time for the next particle emission will be chosen at random between rate and rate two. So we've got rate here and rate two. Okay, so same thing for the start angle. So you can specify the rotation, the, uh, the particle rotation in degrees, and it's chosen at random between those two different numbers. Okay, the lifetime at the moment, it's, in, it's five seconds, but if we wanted to make the particles, um, or this, the lifetime of the particles uh, longer, then we could increase that to maybe 10 seconds. And so now, rather than um, going for five seconds and then stopping and, and then starting again, it should go for 10 seconds and then start again. So there we go, it's just started again after 10 seconds. Okay, there's also loop. So we could turn loop off if we don't want it to loop, but basically at the moment it's just looping. Once the particles have um, all been emitted, then it starts again after the 10 seconds. You can also turn autoplay off if you don't want the particle system to start in the game when it launches. 
So you can use a script to control when this particle system begins. So maybe you only want it to begin when a certain event occurs in the game. Now you can have it to loop. There's also um, pre-warm as well, which is another setting you can turn on or off. So if enabled, the particle system will be initialized as though it was already completed a full cycle. Okay, um, it's optional. It's um, only available for when you have loop turned on. So if you turn loop off, you don't see that option. Okay, lighting, you can enable that if you want um, your particles to be seen in light. So you want light to be able to hit those particles. You can change the intensity. Um, the depth, so different settings here that we won't really look at. And if you want to, you can go through these different settings here. Um, to get started, you won't really need to play around with that, but you can later on if there's more that you want to do. The emitter shape is the shape that the particles um, fit in. So at the moment, it's a box. You can change it to a sphere. Um, and you might not see the difference, but at the moment, it's sort of emitting in a round sphere sort of shape. Um, and we could change the radius of that if we wanted to. We could change it to a box again. And now it's kind of fitting within a box. So if we increase the number of particles to something like something massive like 3000, um, and we have it as a box, we might be able to see a bit better possibly, but we should, should be able to see a box kind of shape. Okay, some different things you can do here with color maps. If we scroll down, you can change the rotation speed over time, the velocity, change the color over time. So you can move the red line down, we can move the green line down, and we could change its color over time if we wanted to. So they should start off purple and then uh, eventually kind of turn turn white. So you can see that these they're starting off dark purple and then by the time they get out to sort of this area here, they're starting to turn purple. Okay. So this one will go from like a pinky color to a yellowy color. Okay. And there's also opacity um, scale as well if you want to change the size over time. So maybe they get bigger over time. There you go. So start off really small and then they get much, much bigger. Um, or maybe we want to start the other way. and make them kind of disappear over time. So start really big and get smaller until you can't see them anymore. All right, so you could kind of use, change the size and you could kind of get like a fog or smoke kind of effect um, by fiddling around with those settings. So if you change the color around a little bit, um, you might be able to get kind of like a, a smoky effect there. There we go. And we could we could also change the size or the scale so it kind of stays like that the whole time. There we go. So if you want smoke in your scene, that's you can kind of have settings similar to that. All right, so there's lots of different settings there to fiddle around with. Have a go at it. Um, that's how you add a particle system and um, change the properties of the particles in Play Canvas and remember that just like anything else in Play Canvas you can control it using scripts so later on you can add some code to control the particle system and have it react to different events in your game. Thanks for watching.